Good morning, everyone. Today is the 7th of August. My name is Anne-Marie Band, and this is the Moneyball Morning Report for the Benzinga Pro platform. Take a look at how important 18,000 was in the NQ. Notice, if you're trading with something like a full-on mini <clears throat> instead of a micro, you might not be able to hold on here towards the end of the day but if you did hold on and you were able to carry it overnight you're 400 points to the good just about right here take a look at resistance this is going to be the battleground today 18,500 if we get up over it we'll move into the value area low and that's going to be what number is that what is the open there 18,865. Remember, my premise was we're going to have a wide swath of volatility right around this area. So people are thinking, hey, listen, buy the dip. They're calling for emergency rate cuts and whatever. I'm like, okay, that's bananas. All right. We, we don't need an emergency rate cut. We're just addicted to the heroin of the FOMC. And, uh, you know, I don't know. <sighs> Sorry, there's my diatribe. I'm done. I'm finished. No more. So that's what we're looking for. How do we want to play this? Is the move over? Do we start shorting at the top? Here's my supposition. As soon as we get to this close of this candlestick, there are going to be sellers sitting here. That's uh, 18,513. The high here was 18,461. So pullbacks, in my mind, will give us buy zones. So what might the buy zone look like? Well, it could be all the way down here at 18,150. It could be at the point of control um, or the VWAP for this entire range, that could be 18,202. But pullbacks are buy zones. Look at the volume that began to accumulate that is positive lifting price action up. This is a really good indicator that tells us what's going on in general. All right, let's go to the ES. I don't know why I started with the NQ today. Just felt like it, I reckon. Okay, same thing here. Another reason why we use the micros in this kind of environment. One, three days of motion, um, 50 to 35 or so. It's now at 53.20. Notice it has not filled the gap yet. What is that gap? The close is 53.58. Notice the thin pocket of volume here. Very likely to continue the rise up. If not, that gives us a clear move to the downside. Could we be building some sort of weird head and shoulders pattern? Could this be a head and shoulders pattern? Okay, so let's measure it. 55.06, 57.20, so that's 206, 214 points. So if we have 214 points from this 55, that's 5290 something, and we've already breached that, right? So are we building another shoulder in this formation? I don't believe in the head and shoulders pattern, folks, but for people that do, there it is. So what's going to happen today? Well, I suspect that the buyers are going to try and get it up into this area at 53.58 to 53.61, potentially 53.88, and then another fade back into 53.31. I do not see a gigantic rise to the north. That being said, it could happen. What are we looking at here, though? Low, higher low, higher low. Guess what that means? Buy the dip. Simple as it is. See the volume? That tells us, hey, listen, they're buyers crowding under here, right? 
How do you know, do I stick in here? Well, first of all, you want to wait for the best place. If you're saying to yourself, hey, I want to sell, make sure you try to get as close to this edge at 53.58, right? If you say, hey, I want to buy, you might need to wait for the VWAP. You might need to wait for the middle of this range. Look at the congestion over here and potentially say, you know, I think I might want to do that. All right, let me change the stroke of this. It's just so big. Um, and let's put another line in there. Right? Somewhere around that zone. Could be yesterday's VWAP, old resistance, new support kind of thing. All right, and that's 5281. Okay. Let's take a look at the RTY. As those of you who will remember, I said, hey, listen, these guys, it's nothing but exit liquidity. Look, accumulation, distribution, right? All the way here, they're saying, hey, listen, let's accumulate here. We're going to try to accumulate here, but no. And so where are we going? Into the pocket where we started accumulating in the first place, right? Process of the markets allows us to uh, facilitate trade, and so they're going to go to where these levels are. And so this textbook motion to me, right? I'd said from the beginning, you want to sell these bounces. So here we are at this zone, now 21 and some change. Where is that? 20... It's already filled the gap in the pre-market. So some selling very likely to come in here, but it is a buy the dip formation, just like all the others. Low, higher low, higher low. It tells us buyers are in there. This tells us buyers are in there. So look for the fade into key areas and try the micro. Okay. Key areas might be 2065, uh, 2078. All right, let's take a look at the Dow. I missed the Dow yesterday because I had a brain hemorrhage, I reckon. So take a look at the Dow. Wow, that is a mess. Let's remove everything here. Yes. All right, so here's the Dow. Um, look at that price action. Just holding off this 39,000. Good solid bounce into resistance. Could it move higher? You betcha, right? Pullbacks are buy zones here. This indicator tells me that. So let me go to YM2 and see if it's giving me a prettier formation. Wow, value area high right here. This is a different picture than what the other one is saying, but it is still telling me buy the dip, though probably ought to wait for a really good dip to buy it. Um, my suspicion is that that is still near 39,000 round than about. Okay, so that's it for that. Pullbacks or buy zones, folks. I know I'm looking at the dailies, but look at the old area of resistance. If you've been long, it's time to take some profit. If it comes back into the low pocket or this line in the sand, which is at 39,125, going to be another place to try a micro. All right, let's take a look at SPY. Same sort of thing. Low, higher low, higher low. There's the gap at 531. This was my thought. I said, hey, listen, we get up over 524. It's another buying pressure event up into 531. So Let's say you're looking at it and you're like, wow, I didn't buy anything to hold it for there. What do I do now? It's a pullback formation that says, listen, here is a buy the pullback space. Here's the thin pocket of volume. Here's the heavy congestion zone. Maybe I can come in to 528 and then see if it can run up to 531, potentially 534, which is... Um, the value area low, maybe it'll chop around here, right, into the 540. That's what the traders 
really kind of want to get to, I think. We'll just have to see how well that goes. All right, it's going to be a very jagged set of motion. Notice, this is not giving us buy formations. These are selling formations. So as we get to the top, we have to think about the sellers reinitiating and coming down into the deeper spaces. So this one, because this is red, could have a fairly sharp dip on it before it tries to buy. This one's a very jagged formation. I don't really like how that one looks at all in terms of reliability. Same thing here, right? Now it is making a curve, low, higher, low, higher, low. It's trying to fill the gap. There it is at 447. What do we want to do there? Listen, it's a place to take profit. And if you go short, you've got mm, $3 of risk, right? Now, can you go to a tighter time frame and say, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait until it shows a topping formation and gives me, say, a 15-minute candlestick that rotates over, and then I'm going to take the trade. Uh, otherwise, I'd wait for the dip and try to buy the dip. Just move in the direction of the short-term trend, realizing that negative pressure is going to find uh, buyers, right? And it, but it could be all the way up to 454. Last one, we're not going to look at oil today, uh, gold today. We're going to look at oil. Oil gave us a very hefty bounce. Look at that off of the 72 area. Three days in a row, four days in a row. One, two, three. Low, higher, low, higher, low. How to know that you're building pressure and a long action is going to take you to where you want to go. Look at this. They're almost right into resistance right now. Today is the EIA report. I don't know if it's going to be a nothing burger, but because we're sitting in the space that we're sitting in, I would suspect that a big bounce into the value area low would give you a short. Right now, the pullbacks are buy zones. Where might that be? I don't know, 74. That might be a nice one. Again, choose the micros. All right, folks, that's it for me. I'll see you on the platforms. And if you belong to the Benzinga Pro, you'll be there for the midday Moneyball Report. Take care.